today I want to share with you an add-on that I've been working on for one of my projects. A lot of people have been showing a lot of interest in the dialogue system tutorial, so I wanted to share what I've been working on in case that it might be of use to you. As you can see here, I have an example of with the dialogue box, very similar to the one that I had before. I only changed the font and, and the color of the background, but I added a lot of features that I'm using for one of my projects. And if you can see here, like it can ask you questions so you can answer. So right now, what's your favorite color? Let's say, I don't know, red. And it says you pick the color red and it shows that in a different color. And then I show you want to color red. You can go back. If you say no, it will go back to the previous step. If you say yes, it will continue here. It's asking for my name. So let's say Emilio and it will remember that. So your name is Emilio and you're like the color of red. And then I showcase here, like you can also add the names here and a portrait of the person speaking. And, you know, also you can change different backgrounds and everything that like that. And when the conversation ends, it closes. So if you want to know how to use this in your projects, I will go through a very simple explanation of how we can achieve this. And I hope that it helps you in your project. So I'm starting here with an empty project. This is, it could be also like an existing project, but I'm going to use just a blank one. Um, and the first thing you need to do is copy the folder add-ons from the GitHub repository. You can find a link in the description where to download it. And that add-ons folder, you can paste it inside here and it will contain almost everything you need to get started. So I, I imported the folder here and you will see here, it will have the dialog, which is a, a plugin with a few files and it's not really organized right now. I'm working on it. I will keep updating it and you can keep downloading the new version from GitHub and updating the version that you have here in your project. After copying these add-on folders, another thing that we have to do to set it up is to go to project, project settings and plugin. And here in plugin, you will see that this shows up, which is the direct system add-on and you enable it. Once you enable it, we have to create a new script, which is called global. We're going to use this to store some variables, like the answers to the questions that we had. And inside this script, we need to remove everything and declare a dictionary, which is custom variables. And it's going to be empty. Now that we have this global file, which is where we're going to store the information from the conversations, we go back to project, project settings, auto load. And here on the path folder, we select the global.gd, which is the file that we just created and the name we're going to send it. So we add it and here we name it global. Here we set it to lowercase and we have to have here the singleton enable. So that's all you need to do to set it up right now. Let's create an empty scene. Let's save it. Let's say it's going to be main. And in this scene, you can add the node, which is included in the add-ons folder dialog dialog to the scene. You can drag and drop it to your project and you will see that this will show up. So this is the node that handles all the conversation and it will have a script here. In this script, you will see the plugin that I'm working on. You don't really have to understand this a lot, just a little bit to get by, but I will be modifying this and updating it with new functions. All you need to know is this part over here, which is the dialog script, which contains all the instructions that you want the dialog to show. In this case, we start the project showing a background. This is the, the placeholder that happens whenever you import it, but you can replace it later. Here you have the background. All this is a, an array. So each of these instructions are dictionaries inside an array. In this case, we have the background here, the text, uh, which will show just text and nothing more. And then the question here in the question is where you ask and you show them two options. Do you want to pick one or the other? This dictionary has to have three keys question, which is what is going to show up in the dialog box, then variable, which is how are we going to internally call that answer? So if they answer one or the other, how are we going to know? In this case, it's the fav favorite color. So fav color and options, which is a, an array with a lot of options. Those options will have the label key, 
which is going to be red, and the value, which is the color that you want to assign to that. Same with the blue. So whenever we pick something, we can assign to this variable fab color one of these options. Here on the next step, we, we see that we say you pick the color and then we have a very long thing. This thing basically is taking the variable. Whenever you call a variable that you declare in this dialog system, it will show you the label. So in this case, if you pick red, it will show you here, it will be red. And if you pick here um, blue, it will show blue. And this other part is just a standard BB code, which will get the fab color value and it will set that word to that specific color. You can do this without having any variable. You can just write the content there. But in this case, we want to make it dynamic. So if they pick blue, we can see the blue text. Now we get a confirmation question. In this case, instead of having a variable, since we don't want to set it to anything, there's a new key, in this case, checkpoint, which will go a few steps back. In this case, since we are asking, are you sure about the color? And we know that the color is three steps behind. If they say yes, we continue. But if we say no, we go checkpoint minus three. So you can use this for a bit of dynamic content, like maybe they type their name and they made a mistake. So you can ask, are you sure you want to be called like this? And you can go back. Now, another kind of this input could be just a dialog with text input. In this case, it's input. And now this will be on the dialog box, window title. It will be on the small window that happens in the middle of the screen. You can write your name. And then whenever they set that, it will be applied to the variable. The same way that we do here with the questions, we got the five color and we can access it. We can do the same in the future with this new variable that we create here in this step. So in the next line, we say, so your name is, and the name of the variable that we just declare. In this case, if you say my name is Alex, it will be, so your name is Alex, and you like the color and the same as we did before with the color. And now in the next one, we've been only using the text key when we are showing text, but you can also set the name key and in this case, it will show up on the top right corner where it says name. Um, and you can set it also with colors or with any other variables. It can be just plain text. And then you we do the same with the dialog system. And the final one is an action, which is game end, which will close the game. If you don't have any action at the end, the node will destroy itself and you can continue with your game or do, do whatever you want. And since this is the placeholder code, what we can do is define this as a JSON file. So here on the scene that we had before, if you select the dialog node, you will see here external file. And if we press here and we select a JSON file that has the same structure with the same keys, I have one example here inside dialog example. This will, let's try it out, show the dialog is being loaded from JSON. If you open that JSON file, you see here, this dialog is being loaded. So if we update it, hello, and we go back to our project, and you will see now that the hello is added at the end. You can have all your scene scripts here in a, diff in a different file, and you don't have to do them in external files if you don't want to. You can also set the variable. In this case, if you set the variable dialog script from another node, Let's see, let's add a script here in the control node. This is our empty scene. And now here we delete everything except the ready. Now here, instead of adding it to the scene like this, we need to delete this node. And we're gonna load it from here. So dialog is going to be load and we can drag and drop this scene. Now on dialog, we can do dialog script and here we say text because we want to show us some text that says hello from the main script which has to be a dictionary 
and we save it. Now we need to add child this dialog. I almost forgot. I need to also instance here. So we create a new copy of it. So now we have the scene, the dialog scene. We instance it. We set the variable and then we add it as a child to this control node. And instead of showing the text that we had before, it will show us this new one that we set from the script. Hello from the main script. And if I press next, it will delete and it will go back to your game or whatever. We can make this more complicated by adding name YouTube text nice tutorial you are now being demonetized very very youtube that's something that youtube could say okay so now we try it out again we see the first line and the second line which is being called from someone called youtube so these are the basics of how you can use this system um i encourage you to read the code here i'm gonna go a little bit quick about everything just in case you want to contribute something to it i know the structure is not ideal but i was trying to abstract this as much as possible to share it with everybody i'm using this on a project which is very very particular so a lot of the things that i might have here might not be useful to your game uh, but as always you know it might help some other people so i wanted to share it here as we can see the dialogue script is the variable that we cover the export variable which is the external file is the one that happens when you click on that option so you, you can open it text twin duration is the time that it will take the text to show up in this case is one second and input next is the key that you need to press to continue you can set this to any of your actions if you remember actions are here in project settings input map and i'm using ui accept but you can create a new one, which will be, I don't know, mouse click, space, or delete, or whatever key you want to use. So the function file will load the JSON files. And in this case, it's very simple. You are only loading the JSON, which is a, as an array with some dictionaries inside, and you are converting it to Godot. So in this case, if you load a file that is valid in the same kind of format, you will load this in as intended. The parse text script, let, let me make this a little bit bigger. Okay. So parse text will go through all the dictionary that we created, which is everything is being stored here in custom variables. So whenever you answer something, you go to custom variables. So this will check on your, on our global. That's why we need to create that script. This will check all the different variables and replace the text with the text that we have stored. Here ready is the first thing that happens when the node is, is ready. In this case, we check if there's an external file set to set the dialog script. And if it's not, we just go with the one that is predefined. In this case, it's the example that I showed at the beginning of the video. Now I reset the, the name. So we don't show any name by default and the rest it's a bit more of the how when you're pressing a key, here you have the input, uh, here show dialog or high dialog. Um, the twin, which we covered in previous episodes, so you might know that one. Like it's just a continuation from that. Updating the name will also make sure about having some name variable or not. And if if the variable is name, I show the close up, which was that dwarf that you could see there. The sprites are made again by my brother. He made them for his YouTube channel. I'm using them as placeholders, but you can use whatever you want. Updating the text. This is from previous video as well. Log dialog is the same, but the handler has been a little bit modified. And here is the event handler, which is all the actions that you have and how you treat them. In this case, we have the event for text and the name. We update the name. The questions here we have how all the questions works what i did was it will read all the options that are inside of those and i will create different buttons 
set those buttons with some signals and those signals will send us the final input. Here on input we have for the dialog action is the one that I coded game end and it will do anything. So here if you want to code your own action, you can say if event action equals next, you can do whatever you like here. So here can, you can add any of your custom code. So whenever you have in one of those lines action, whatever you create, in this case next, you will do everything like go to another scene. In this case, I have also like one for a scene. If you set scene and you set the name of a, a scene resource, it will change the current scene to that one. That's very useful for transitions if you want to go and split everything in small scenes. Background, it will change the image. If you don't set any image, it will be hidden, but as soon as you select one, it will be shown. Sound is for playing sound. This is not done, so I have a placeholder here. And the default one will just show other event on the terminal, and that's for me to know that you know something should happen there, but it, that is the default. So the rest are just things for clearing up the signals and stuff like that, but there's not much more that you need in this version have a simple dialogue in your game. Uh, I started creating this out of necessity and also I've been checking some of the other plugins that existed. One of my viewers recommended me to try his library, which is called Rakugo Framework. And I feel like this is very, very specific to making a visual novel and it has a lot of similarities with Rempai. But I don't feel like this is something that you, you can easily add to your existing projects because it's very heavy. Like I'm opening this, this is loading right now, I'm doing nothing. And it takes very, very long time to load. It also like changes here, like it adds some menus. And I feel like it's very invasive. But, but if you're interested in making a visual novel, it could be it can be something that you can check out. I will leave a link in the description as well. That's it for today and I hope that you are able to use this in your projects. Remember that you can load the scene, set the text that you want and forget about it. You don't really have to do very crazy things with it and I will keep updating this on the GitHub page. And also if you have any questions you can join the Discord and ask me anything you want. Thank you very much to all my Patreons. I'm really really grateful to all of you. Hope to see you guys in the next one.